Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 32. In case you don't understand what it was we were doing, I want you to see how it reads in the contemporary English version. He will attack them in battle. Read after me. He will attack them in battle. And each time he strikes, it will be to the music of tambourines and harps. So guess what? You must provide the music for God to strike. God doesn't strike without rhythm. Hallelujah. So that's, that's striking. So you see, it's striking. It's striking. So it's the music you provide that determines the strike. Hallelujah. If you don't provide it, they won't strike. They'll keep looking at you the way you're looking at me. That's how your enemies look. And he will attack them in battle. And each time he strikes them, it will be to the music of tambourine and harps. He will attack them in battle. And each time he strikes them, it will be to the music of tambourine and he will attack them in battle, and each time he strikes them, it will be to the music of tambourines and harps. He will attack them in battle, and each time he strikes them, it will be to the music of tambourines and harps. You still don't get it. Praise God. If you find God, you've heard the word you need. Because what the word does is to point you to God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Sometimes we bring graces to add value to the work that we are doing. To remind you and to confirm that the things we have been saying to you are true. Because the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So when you hear the same thing from other tongues, it confirms that we're speaking that which is true. Praise God. Very quickly, Exodus chapter 3. I will just say this to you for the new year. Now, may I just register quickly that for those of you who followed the 31st night service when I spoke on I am and declared the name and said to you that this year God has given us himself because in his precepts is prophecy. I know that a well-delivered message is not equal to a well-received message. Uh, because Jesus also said that this is a hard saying. Uh, I didn't declare it's the year of your... So I understand that some of you didn't get the message. You're waiting for me to say, this year! Uh, I didn't say that. I just showed you what the Bible says in Psalm 119 and verse 45. Can you believe what it says? It says, because I have found your precepts, I can walk freely. In other words... Precepts are prophecy. Something else I said that many of you may not have gotten. Listen to me. I said to you that prophets are second degree, second level priests. Do you know why? Because the only thing prophets come to do is to enforce what priests did before. It was when Israel started to go away from the way of the Lord, which the prophets were custodians of, God sent prophets to warn them of the danger. So, in other words, if we remind you of the precepts of God, we are prophesied. I've not heard a prophecy in scripture where God did not call the people to return to his ways. So, when people come to church and I say, this is the way of the Lord, and you say, no, you didn't prophesy. That's prophecy. But I know it's a hard saying. Please go back. Why am I saying this? Go back and listen to the message. Don't assume you understood it. And when I said it is the year of I am, I'm not talking of 2021. You have broken into a season when the announcement of the name tells you that if you have him, you have all that's in him. So you are your own prophet this turn. You declare what you want it to be. It's like a blank check. Anything you fill into it, that's what it becomes. Because I am the way. You want to know the way? I am the way. You hate being told lies. I am the truth. You want to live the life? I am the life. It's I am. You're afraid of death? I am the resurrection and the life. 
There's nothing you want. Is I am. I will be to you whatever you want him to be. Whatsoever Adam called them, that was their name. You name the air. If you have him, you have all that in him. But that's not my message today. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3. I'll be very quick. I'll be very quick. This is icing on the cake. Trust me, if we ended there, you have received. Don't say we went to church and they didn't preach. What you heard, it was. Read with me. Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the west end of the wilderness and came to the mountain of God, Horeb. Are you following? The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire, blazing out of the middle of a bush. He looked. The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn up. Go on. Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? Go on. God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush. Moses, Moses said, yes, I'm right here. Go on. God said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You are standing on holy ground. Next. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, afraid to look at God. Go back to verse 1, please. Go back to verse 1. Verse 1 again. Just leave verse 1 on the screen. Let me quickly talk to you about something I've tried to remove your shoes. What did I say? Yes, remove your shoes. Remove your shoes. It will be very quick. Just listen to me. So Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Let's first go back to how Moses got here. I hope you realize Moses was a prince of Egypt. He was taken out of the water. Twice in the life of Moses, two significant things happened to him. He was pulled out of the water. One of the significances of waters in the scriptures are overwhelming situations, things that conquer you. I read to you from Psalm 66. He said we went through the waters. You see it? So waters sometimes represent the things that overwhelm and conquer us that are too much for us. So Moses was pulled out of the water. A mark of the fact that he was destined to pull the people out of water. Then now again he's looking at the fire and he's hearing the voice from the fire. Again, Psalm 66 says that what? We went through the fire. Do you get that? So mark that in your mind. Then it says Moses was shepherding the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. How did he get here? How did a prince suddenly become one who was shepherding? I mean, imagine his mother came to Midian and saw him leading sheep. How would she have felt? And guess the painful part. The person he was leading the sheep for was who? If it was your brother, how would you feel? You are working for your father-in-law. Not even one good job. You are pushing men all over the place. That's your job. First of all, the embarrassment of living in the house of your father-in-law. All your wife's sisters can say, Moses, please let me bring that soup from the fridge. Uh, you have not served this place this morning. A whole daddy of the house. And then imagine daily he has to come before his father-in-law and come and give account. Uh, so I led the sheep through Jethro today. I went through Horeb. Then I went to, so how many sheep were there? Uh, there are 50, sir. Okay, one is missing. What's going on? Are you stealing my sheep? No, sir. Sorry, sir. A whole man of the house. People seasons come up. You see, the problem with most of us is we think destiny, the purpose of God for our lives, is discovered. No. Purpose, destiny, is not a discovery. It's a journey. It is obedience upon obedience. In hindsight, you find that you have fulfilled purpose. Nobody knew purpose and went to do it. As you obeyed God one after the other, when your obedience is complete, then you make subject, Hebrews 12, to everything that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. So Moses was coming from being a prince. Suddenly, there was a lockdown. He was running away from having done what? Killed. And to escape from the consequence of murder. What did he do? He ran to Midian. On getting to Midian, the situation spoke to him. Sometimes God doesn't hide the next thing from you. The situation should teach you. What am I saying? This year, advancement requires adjustment. You could not be a prince in Midian. Sorry, we're not in Egypt now. We're now where? Thank you. We're now in lockdown. This is Corona era. So guess what? You have to cut back on some of your excesses. There's no self-fulfilling promise or prophecy. Every, prom- every prophecy in scripture, God moved men to pray, to act, to do something before it came to pass. If you don't make adjustments, you can't have advancement. 
Because we have declared a word doesn't mean it will fulfill itself. Your obedience is required. Move out of a house that's too much for your salary. You are now a median. Stop going to the restaurant where what you spent is more than what you can afford. You're now a median. If you can't afford your house and your father-in-law has a house, go and live there with your wife. Swallow your pride. You're now where? A median. You are an independent lady, but your father-in-law has a company and you can work there as secretary. Go and work there. There's no God. We do it. Nothing will happen this year. You will suffer. I take it from me. Once you come to median, you must make what? Adjustments. Yeah. And see what happened as soon as he made adjustments. What happened? Go on, go on, go on. Give me verse one again. See what happened now when he made the adjustment. He let, it was, whose flock was he leading? Your own is in other people's own. God never met a man who wasn't serving somebody. What did David go to do in the battlefront? His father sent him on an errand. He found kingship. What did Saul go to do? His father lost what? Then he went to, and uh, what happened? Hey, that's how it is. Uncle, you will lead somebody's flock, not your own, eh, to the west end of the wilderness. And then you will come to the mountain of God. The path to yours in God is through somebody else. The Bible says he has not been faithful in another man's own. Who will give him his? Eh, eh, I can't work for somebody. This year you will suffer. See. So yeah, next verse 2. Verse 2. See, see, see. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire, blazing out. Times have changed. You must make adjustments to have advancement. The angel of God appeared to him in flames of fire, blazing out of the middle of a bush. Now, this part is for Nigerians. We love miracles, wonders. But guess who was in it? The angel of the Lord. The fire that you, that you like, it was not God. Though. Can you imagine? I didn't see this thing all along. It was the voice that was God. So God will use whatever he needs to use to get your attention. But you must wait to hear instruction. Many of you are attracted to the... <laughs> ah, we are three million. We are plenty. That's just angel manifesting. It's like Sheba. When she went to the home of Solomon. Just seeing servants. She lost spirit. If she had turned back from there, she would think she got wisdom. She didn't meet Solomon. So people, excuse me. What you are attracted to in the church, in the word of God, well, it's all angelic manifestations. And Hebrews chapter 1 says, to which angel did he say today, you are my son, I've begotten you? They are lesser. Many of us are jumping around ma- useless fires. Fires that you accepted. Eh? Yeah, exactly. It was just in a still small voice. So God is in signs that you will despise this year. Yes. See those fellowships of two people in your house that you say, no, until I go to, let me not go and use one statement now. They say, I'm talking about somebody. You, you, you will not find anything. You will miss God. This is how Israel missed their visitation. Look at it. Moses saw the fire. He was excited. But guess what? The fire was not the point. It was the angel. The voice was the issue. So let's go on. The bush was blazing away, but it didn't burn. So God will use what you like. Share his music you like. We will sing for you. You shall come to church. You are hearing music. You like the sound. You like Hill's song. All those voices come. But when you get here and you finish hearing the song, please take the instruction. Uh He says, Moses said, what's going on here? I can't believe this. Amazing. Why doesn't the bush burn up? Go on. Now, see, God saw that he had stopped to look. This is another problem. Some people see, but they don't stop to look. This year, keep your curiosity. The, The only way to get answers is to ask questions. Keep your curiosity, what? Alive. Every, some of the deepest revelations I've told you in this church that Jesus told us, if somebody didn't ask a question, I wouldn't have said it. Yeah. It was questions people asked. If somebody did not ask a question, it would not have what? Generated it. When God gives you teachers, sometimes your best sermons are not the ones you preach on a Sunday morning. It is those text messages, those phone calls you make to say, sir, what is this? That's when you get the answer. You must pull it out of people. As he said, remember the example of the car he gave. Some things are in the warehouse. You're not going to ask your father at his age to go and remove it for you. His only to tell you is there. 
You cannot ask, Daddy, where did you put it? And say, it's on the left corner when you enter. But that you will not ask that question, you will suffer, ma. Me, I no go suffer. If you will, if you don't do these things. Because the times in which we live, they have what? They have changed. We're now in Midian. We're no longer in Egypt. Do you see it? So when you see a thing, God is doing something in the earth in your time. Go there and see. Yes. Try to understand. Why is this fire burning? I mean the bush burning, but it's not being consumed. Don't look from a distance. Excuse me, sir. Can God speak to Moses without him coming close? Why did he wait for him to come close to speak? Some of you, a lot of what God has not done in your life, as signs he gave you, you ignored. You've had many burning bush experiences. Things that were amazing. Wow. But you still did not come close. You came to church. You heard a word. He blessed you. Still, you refused to join workers. You, until you come close, there are some things you will not hear. You want to stay at this, at the door forever. You never want to come in. The, the full value of that encounter and exchange is inside the house. It's not at the door. So Moses went closer and see what he did. And there was something I wanted to tell you on the last point of being humble. And this year, avoid shame. See when people, if you can drive Uber, drive it. Shame is a terrible thing. Hebrews tells us Jesus despised the shame. Do you know the first, Jesus died twice. Do you know that? You don't know? Oh, go and read Ephesians and Galatians. I think it's Galatians. The first death was that he became a human being. Ah, for God to go to the toilet and poo-poo. God. Hey, that's death. The Bible says he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. God that hates sin suddenly took on flesh and is now being tempted by the things that tempt human beings. That's death. That was his first death. Accepting humanity. Then now being subject to the ones he created as the creator. To die at their hands. But all for our good. So, if you didn't have shame, where's your shame coming from? Your shame is from your pride. Drive Uber. But you will prosper. If God is in it. Hey, am I speaking in tongues? Uh -huh. Follow me. It says, God saw that he had stopped to look. God called to him from out of the bush. Moses, Moses said, yes, I'm right here. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Because this is just the aside. God said, don't come any closer. See the reason God said, don't come any closer. Eh? He says, remove your sandals. That's why God removed. Take off your shoes. Tell somebody, take off your shoes. Eh? From your feet. You are standing on what? First of all, let me deliver you. Holy means different. In other words, this is a different ground. Holy comes from the word separate. So when I take something in a house... It's explained, holiness is explained in the New Testament. It says, in a great house, there are many what? Utensils, vessels, some for what? Uh -huh. So, in a house, ah, when we were growing up, there was always daddy's chair, one beard that, you sit on daddy's chair. Even in his absence, he traveled though. They still remind us, this is daddy's chair. I think, yeah, this is bondage. The man is not around. Let's sit inside this. It's daddy's chair. Daddy's plate. Ah, dining table again. All the chairs don't have arm. But the only one that has arm is daddy's chair. Hey, you don't know what you're enjoying your generation. So we couldn't sit in daddy's chair. Only daddy gets two pieces of meat. Do you understand? <laughs> uh -huh. So that is, daddy is separate. Daddy is holy. Daddy is choice. Daddy is selected by mommy. The rest of you suffer. So, oh yeah, see. So he said, don't come any closer. Remove your sandals from your feet. You are standing on a different ground from the one you are coming from. Now, quickly, what do shoes represent? Number one, protection. Many of us, we are so, as he was saying, you are not vulnerable. You come to God with your cover. You are warning him and watching him. Don't come close. So don't come and touch my, my injury. That's how that pastor did this to me. You, you come even to the presence of the one who can heal, but you don't want to expose your wound. You are too ashamed before your doctor. Who will heal you? Do you see it? Shoes protect our feet. But if you don't take them off, God cannot see the blisters of your journey. Don't come here with package. That's what he's saying. Second thing shoes do, with them we walk. In other words, they're your confidences. 
The things with which you have guaranteed that you will arrive at your own chosen destination. Can you imagine? Because if it is God's destination, you use God's shoes. With your feet shod with what? Uh, preparation of the gospel of what? Uh, that's it. Those are the shoes we walk in. Blessed are the feet of them who come with good tidings. And uh, that's the only shoe we walk in. Any other shoe is your own. Top thing shoes are in them we stand. That's your worldview. Your stand on issues. Me, I'm a feminist. What are they talking about? All those men, they're all useless. Including your pastor. God will forgive you. We're all useless. Then you're 36, you're not married. And we're trying to explain to you that auntie, see, it's true. In history, men have behaved badly. But please, we're in 2020. This is now a holy ground. In other words, a different time, a different ground, a different situation, a different place. Remove that shoe of your parents. Wear new shoes and see differently. You are saying, no! I'm woke! No, no, what do you mean? You want to chance me? God said, you can't come close like that. So, if you are wondering, why does God use Nusa when he's singing? Me, when I sing, the place, the atmosphere is just dry. They've collected his shoe. Your own, you are still wearing it. Anybody whose feet is still dressed, you can't, they will tell you where to stop. Auntie, sorry, after this place, you can't pass, sir. You can't pass, ma. You need to drop your shoes. What worked last year will not work this year. There's new wine. The problem is new wine skin. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. Your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Do you see it? Remove that shoe. Give it to God. Sew it. He said, embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Next verse. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops wealth from maturity in you. For my sake, give me my regular NIV. Now you understand this one. At least you can relate to this. Just my regular NIV. Yes, next verse, next verse. Look at it. It says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. And I told you, his good, pleasing, and perfect will are one. I've heard some funny people telling us there's good will. There's no. They're just adjectives, descriptions of the same will. Please. Eh? Good. Yeah, they're not different. They're not, exactly. They're not different types of will. <laughs> his good, pleasing, and perfect will is one. Amen? Praise God. But there's a transformation and take note of present continuous, not renewed or renewal, renewing every day. As his messes are new morning, new every morning rather, your obedience must be new every morning. Your submission must be new every morning. Your cooperation must be new every morning. God can bring new and you bring old. They won't fit. Hmm? They won't fit. So people, we have come to a time, to a season, to a place where God wants you to come closer, but he can't bring you closer with the shoes that you have, with the confidences that you have, with your stand. There's new waiting inside. And guess what? It is the deliverance of many people. That's your real call. In your different fields, in your homes, wherever the Lord has planted you, whatever fields, it's the deliverance of many. But for that to happen, that profile you're looking for, that influence you're looking for on social media, that's not making you show us one breast. You're just trying to get more followers. Suddenly I'm seeing Christians using foul language and saying things that they should not say because somebody has told you the only way you can blow. They are giving you old shoes. They are new shoes. They are new shoes. If you wear those shoes, you will blow without sin. If you wear those shoes, sir, you will prosper without giving bribe. If you wear those shoes, man, you will marry without having sex before, premarital sex. If you wear those shoes, you'll be healthy. If you wear those shoes, trust me, you have longevity. If you wear those shoes, you will have peace in your heart. If you wear those shoes, you will have rest. So we start at what? Humility. We go to what? Keep your curiosity. 
And then we end with what? What's the last one? What are you losing? Lose your shoes. Let them go. Your confidences. God has done amazing things. What has just happened going from 2020 to 21? A page has just been turned. And guess what? There's no blank page in God's book. What is going to happen this year was written before you came into this year. Okay? God was there before Moses came to Horeb. It was called the mountain of God before Moses grew up. Yes, it didn't just become the mountain of God because Moses came there. It's Moses who just journeyed there. Okay? And let me tell you why you must keep your curiosity. Very important. Do you know that Israel had leaders? Why did God choose Moses? Israel had leaders. The Bible says, if you read the encounter, when God sent him to them, he said, you will tell the leaders of Israel. Why did God choose him? Because his innocence was still alive. Too many of you are too matured for God to use. You are so offended. You've seen, you've seen it all. There's nothing God can say now that will move you. You don't believe that the people, Pharaoh can let the people go. You don't believe it. You don't believe that in these times, you can prosper without sin. You don't believe that you can make it without giving birth. You don't believe you can marry without premarital sex. You don't believe that you can make it without lying. Your belief becomes your reality. And what's your belief? They're your shoes. Because they're the means by which you walk. The things you believe, they're your shoes. They're the means by which you walk. If you take them off and take stand on new ground, receive new covering for your feet, which is what? The gospel. And in the gospel is the character, the nature of God. What's in the gospel? Christ. In him is light, life. And what you receive of him becomes your new reality. And it is well with your soul. So that's the word of God for today, people. You have come into new. You must take off your old. New is not going to unfold itself. You can't continue the same way and expect different. Let go of what you are used to. Let go of how you've done it. Take stock of your life. And see the wonders of God as they attract you. When you get close to them, you will be demanded, required to let go. That's God's humbling. Guess what? God did all of this so that when Moses led Israel out of Egypt, nobody will say he did it because he was the son of Pharaoh. That the excellency of the glory might be yours and not man. God's and not man. You know, he grew up in the house of Pharaoh. So it's easy for people to say it's because of his relationship with Pharaoh. So God took him on, on a humbling journey experience where he stripped him of all his Egyptian and left only one souvenir from Egypt. Only one souvenir. Do you know the only souvenir I left? Can you guess? What's the only souvenir God left with Moses? His name. It was an Egyptian name. Amazing. God left him as Moses. When he met Abraham, he added H. So Abraham became Abraham. Yeah. Because the ha, that vowel, I mean, that sound, the consonant is the sound of Yahweh. Yo, hey, vav, hey. That's the sound of Yahweh. When it comes to anything, Sarai became Sarah, the H, the ha. That's God. That's how it manifests in every name. But in the case of Moses, he left it as a reminder, a souvenir of where they're coming from. He let him take their name. And also to humble him, to remind him. That I used you to lead Israel out, though your identity is Egyptian. Praise God. Praise God. This year, newness and new expressions are waiting in God. I am is ready to unfold dimensions of him you have not seen before. But you can't come into it with the shoes you are wearing. With the confidences that you have. With the mentality that you have. With the assumptions that you have with the confidences with which you have worked so far, they will fail you in this new. You must be willing to make adjustments where it says make adjustments. When it says let go, let go. When it says allow yourself to be cheated, allow yourself to... Don't say I can't take it. The reason many of us are so small is because we are too big. What you are too big to do is why you are so small. I can't take this. A whole me, a whole prince was leading sheep. But it was in that humility he found destiny. Let a whole you come down this year. A whole me. Services, 10.30. And I'll be there since 8. A whole me. 
when I need to sleep. Some of the best moments in a meeting is not when everybody gathers. Are you aware? How many people were around when Hannah went to pray? For Samuel. Only her. In an empty hall. So this, we need an atmosphere. Atmosphere. You, you, are, you are the one that creates it. If you come with poison, the atmosphere is poisoned. It's what you bring. Do you know who brought the oil under the Old Testament? It's the people. And then the priest made the fire. Yeah. The oil didn't fall from heaven. It didn't fall like rain. People bought oil and brought it. What you bring is what we used to create. You bring oil, we light fires. And guess what's expensive? It's the oil. Fire is free. Once there's fuel, we will make fire. So the quality of our service is the quality of your oil. Change your supplier. What did I say? Yes, change your supplier. Buy correct oil. Bring it. We'll light. Ah, you will see fire here. Serious fire. How are you looking so bad? You are making me afraid. Is it too hard? You wanted me to say you are blessed. But you know you are. Unless I just want to help you. Don't you know you are blessed? I should remind you. Okay, you are blessed. You are first and not last. You are the head and not the tail. This year you buy a new car. Your land in Ikoye is waiting for you. In fact, you are going to marry Beyonce. You see? Some of you were almost going to say amen. Somebody's wife. Covetousness. <laughs> Take off your shoes, people. We're in a different place. And it's a different day. The times are different. For example, now, you know healing is no longer just in the name of Jesus be healed. Healing is also obey your doctor. You see, 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 see your faces. Obey your doctor. You see, we have come to times where God will even humble some pastors. You will say, in Jesus' name, you don't work. And doctor will say, take this and it will work. You know why? Because that's their own ministry. And you must submit to them there. Huh? Have you not read Rom Romans? Paul. He said, the leaders in your communities, they don't bear the sword in vain. Do you know what the Bible calls them? Ministers of God for justice. So the only ministry is not the one we do in church. If someone who says, do this, obey him. He's a minister of God. He will strike you dead and God will not raise you up. Yes. Shababa, koko, koko, nothing will happen. You will die. There's nothing that's going to happen. Because he already told you he's a minister of God. Obey him. Do you see how you need to remove the shoes of your old thinking? Yeah. Oh, you think God is not interested in industries? All that God is interested in is what we do inside service. God wants to be, God is king on the mountain of industries, of technology, of law, of education, of politics. And if he is king there, it means his people are there. If his people are there, it means also that the things they say, you listen to them. Acts chapter 4 says, David, though was a king, was a prophet. Was there no prophet in his time? So why does the Bible call him a prophet? It's to let the prophet know, sir, let your head be correct. You are not the only prophet. Remove your shoes. What did I say? Yes, remove your shoes. If you walk with old shoes in a new time, on a different ground, in a new ground, on a new ground, trust me, you can't go farther. You, the, the closest you can come to God is the place of watching, not the place of participating. And God wants to bring you in. He wants to bring you closer. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. This people draw near to me with their lips, with their with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. You want to serve God on your own terms, not this time angry so we can help you. Don't come to doctors hiding how you feel. Imagine going to a doctor. You committed fornication and adultery, so you have HIV AIDS. And he's asking you, so how did this happen? So he can know how to help you, but because you want to present yourself to be holy before him, say, no, maybe one syringe touch me. Ha. To your doctor. You are hiding from your doctor. You want to write your will. Your lawyer is asking how many children do you have. You know you have a way matches. Foreign league. So just say, sir, you will now deny your foreign league. They will now become a problem after you are dead to your local league. Just say the truth. And tell your lawyer the truth. May you not be so packaged. God can add to you. 
May you not be so dressed, God can't dress you. May you not be so covered, God can't see you. Uh, yes, you have to come closer. Come cl closer means come stripped, come naked. Let me see you the way you are. Not that I don't know, but that thing you're hiding. Kill that shame. What, what are you ashamed of? What people will say. That's your pride. If you kill it, guess what? Do you know what is good about it? That means when God also sends you a message to those people, you'll be bold to say it. If you are not, if you are ashamed of people to expose yourself as you are, when God gives you a word to them, if it's not something they like, you will not be able to say it. That's why God could use Moses. Because all along, that's how Moses was. Moses had the privilege of the palace. He left it to go and meet his brethren. Even before God called him. So he already had that character. God could use him. This year, some of your designer shoes are the problem. Remove them. Sell your Louboutin. Go and sell them. Bare feet. Tom Ford. Bare feet this year. No designers. Just come to the Lord as you are. Eh? Don't hold it in your hand. <laughs> Just throw it away. Eh? Because guess what? The same fire that burned without consuming. The Bible says God is a consuming fire. If you come near with old shoes, they get burnt. He's even trying to save you. Don't lose the shoe. Should be you bought it with plenty of money. Keep it somewhere. Because if you come close to me, fire will burn it. Uh -huh. Change old boyfriends. Some of you leave old girlfriends. Change your playlist. They are old shoes. Leave it. Those are the things that are teaching you this wrong. That thing you read in Romans 12 from the message of Jesus, the, the popular culture. What they call pop culture. Uh, that's what they are teaching you. God wants you to be able to go in Corolla with pride because you worked for it. And trust him that if you never ride a Maserati, but you ride in Jesus. <laughs> are you really ready? Because you see, the, the, the problem is people come for these things, but they're not really ready for this God. There's a lot more than a lot of you are. What you want and what you are showing you want are two different things. They are arguing with each other. Yes. That's like a girl that says, I'm not materialistic. But every time we enter a shop, the most expensive thing is what you point to. You say, no, but that doesn't mean I'm materialistic. Okay, so what means you're materialistic? <laughs> Meanwhile, you know the pocket of the person you are demanding it from. And you will not work to make the money to buy it yourself. I've never heard you say, oh, don't worry, I'll provide the rest of them. How much do you have? 20K. Okay, I'll, I'll add the other 20K. It's just, I want, it's 50K. That's what I want. Bone straight. <laughs> Change your shoes. What did I say? Yes. I can't wake up at 5 a.m. to pray. Ah, I need to sleep. Change your shoes. Because guess what? If you hear at 5 a.m. that you have been sacked, you will call pastor. You will suddenly call the pastor and you'll be able to pray now. Yes, change your shoes. Stop walking in uncomfortable shoes so that you will not stay long in your father in law's house dragging sheep. It's a time of testing. COVID came to humble all of us, to cut our excesses, to remind us to make adjustments, to let the light of our lives and our city be God Himself and not the light of the world. To teach us how to walk, how to take our five loaves and meet the needs of our thousands. But guess what we do? When we see thousands, we think we need to buy thousands. We don't buy more bread when we see a crowd. We multiply the bread that we have. Now, the technology that multiplies your bread is the technology of faith and submission to the one who said you should feed them. The problem is rather than use the means of prayer, you want to use contacts and connect and raise funds. 
there is a power by which little satisfies many. Rather than the, the folly of thinking, the only way to meet many is to gather more. Very important. This year, just change your shoes. Your false confidences, your false protection, your false work. Those things in which you are so ensconced and sandwiched and you will fight anybody that touches them. No, this is what I believe. No, 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 lie. I leave all these churches. That's the farthest you will go. You can't come closer. You can't come closer. You want closer? Take off your confidences. Let's rise. I will make room for you. I will prepare for two. So you don't think that you can leave. questions, those hesitations yes, those offenses all those I will not agree what do they mean, who are they, what are they saying take them off, take them off take them off, take a moment yes, and let go, let go remove the shoes of your confidences with which you are un, you know, invulnerable, you are refusing to expose yourself those of you who don't want to put Jesus on your on your platform, on social media so people don't associate your brand with Jesus and you lose customers. This is the time. Correct those kind of shoes. Remove them. Remove them. Remove them. Remove them. Say, I don't want to be part of church. So I will not be offended. I don't want any pastor to offend me. Take it off. Those offenses are perfecting you. They are the fires in which you burn but you are not consumed. It's by him that we're not consumed. So that new can come. There's new. There's new. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you.